In this video, we're going to discuss one more derivative rule, the chain rule. Let's jump right to an example. Here I'm being asked to determine the derivative of y is equal to x plus 3 all in brackets to the power of 5. Now this is a little bit different than anything we've seen before. We've done the derivatives using the power rule of x to the power of n. Now this is similar but different because here we have just x, here we have x plus 3. So that's some function of x all raised to the power of n. If I want to use the power rule, I'm really going to have to multiply this all the way out. This is x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3. But then have to multiply into all of the brackets, foil it all out, uh, which would be an incredibly tedious process, and then use the power rule, because then I would have things in the form of x to the power of n. So we don't want to do that because that's very time consuming um, and very tedious, and it's, there are better ways to do it. Now, we've also learned about the product rule. The product rule is when we have y in the form of f of x times g of x. Well, in this case, we've got an f of x times a g of x, but then we have also got i of x, j of x, k of x. There's just a lot of these. And so to apply the product rule, you technically could do it, but you would once again have to be really diligent with your work. It would become a very tedious process and um, error prone. So we're not going to do that either. What we're going to do instead for this problem is use the chain rule. Now the chain rule can be used when we have some function of x, here we've denoted as u of x, raised to the power of n. And this is what we've got right here. Here we have a function of x, x plus 3, and we can call that u of x. It's some function of x, x plus 3, all raised to a power of 5. So to begin the process of doing this derivative, first I'm going to identify what my u of x is. In this case, that function of x is equal to x plus 3. Oh, that's not going to show very well. Let's use red instead. And then we can say y is equal to u to the power of 5. u to the power of 5. That brings it into this form like this. We just substituted wherever we saw x plus 3, we substituted u. And we can go a step further and we can write this y is now a function of u instead of a function of x. Now this doesn't deny that this is a function of x because u is a function of x right here. We're just applying an intermediate trick of some sorts to make this derivative a little bit easier. So now I can start doing the derivative dy dx. And what I need to do first is I need to determine this term right here, di f by di u. Now di f by di u is another way of saying the first derivative of f with respect to u. We call these kind of close to d, but not quite. We call those di. And what it's saying is that we're still doing the derivative, but we're recognizing that this function has a function within it, that there's another variable here at play, the x variable. So we do this derivative, di f di u, with this funky notation. And what we're going to be doing is a derivative with respect to u of u to the power of 5. So I use my power rule for this. Now let's remember that when we have x to the power of n, to do the derivative of that with respect to x, we would get n x to the power of n minus 1. So it's no different here. We're going to take that exponent, make it the coefficient 5. u to the power of 5 minus 1. This gives me 5 u to the power of 4. So now I have this di f di u term, the first derivative of that f of u function with respect to u, 5 u to the power of 4. Next, I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. 
So that's our u right here. Our u of x is equal to x plus 3. And we're going to determine the derivative of that function. So the derivative of x plus 3 with respect to x. Now the derivative of this is, is the derivative of x, which is just 1, plus the derivative of 3, which is 0. So we're left with just 1. So I multiply that by 1 substituting di u di, sorry, d, du by dx here. So now I can simplify this. I get 5u to the power of 4. Now I'm almost done here, but this isn't a function of u. This is a function of x. We got to bring it back to what we did at the beginning. We kind of, we used a trick to do the derivative. We're going to have to pull that trick out now. And we're going to substitute u back into this equation to complete the derivative. So I have dy over dx is going to be 5. Now I substitute what u is, it's x plus 3, back into those brackets, all to the power of 4. And now I am done that derivative. So to summarize, when we have the chain rule of derivatives, it applies when we have a function in the form of f of x is some intermediate function of x. In the previous case, it was x plus 3 all raised to an exponent n. And we do this derivative by substituting u, some function of x, into the equation, and then doing the derivative of this function as we would normally do, but using u, and then doing the derivative of what we substituted, that u is equal to, in the last case, it was x plus 3. Let's try this again to solidify this concept. Determine the derivative of g of x is equal to x cubed minus 1 all to the power of half. Now let's see if the chain rule is going to work for this. So with the chain rule, we have some function of x, u of x, all raised to a power n. So here we definitely have something raised to an exponent, and that something that's raised to the exponent is a function of x. It's not simply x. It's a function of x. So the chain rule is perfect to do the derivative of this function. So first things first, let's define what our u of x is. It's going to be the expression inside the brackets, that function of x to which the exponent is being applied. So I have u of x is equal to x cubed minus 1. Now by substituting this u into the expression, I'm going to have my g of x become a function of u which is going to be u, x cubed minus 1, all to the power of half. I'm then going to find the partial derivative, di f by di u, which is going to be the derivative with respect to u of that u to the power of half, that f function. So I'm going to have my exponent half times u to the power of half minus 1. So this gives me half u to the power of negative half. Next, I'm going to do the derivative of du dx. du by dx is going to be the derivative of our u term here. It's going to be the derivative with respect to x of x cubed minus 1. So that's going to be the derivative of x cubed, which will be 3x squared. And then the derivative of negative 1, which is simply 0. Now I'm going to put this all together to determine my derivative dy by dx. And that's going to be my di f by di u expression, half u to the power of negative half, times my du by dx expression, 3x squared. Putting that all together, I can multiply my coefficients. I get 3 halves, u to the power of negative half, x squared. Now the last thing I need to do is I'm going to substitute the u expression back in, so I no longer will have a u. I want this all to be in terms of x. So to do that, I'm going to have dy by dx is going to be equal to my 3 halves times my x squared. And now I'm going to do this substitution of u is equal to x cubed minus 1, and u had an exponent of half, so that's still there. And that is the final expression for the derivative. There are other ways I could have written it, but this will do. That's it for this video. Let's have you guys try a few questions to see how well this has resonated.